Thank you for your time this evening. Um, how many people have shopped online? Raise a <laughs> show of hands, great. Uh, people who like shopping? Awesome. Then the next 15 minutes is for you. Um, so here's a little bit of background about who we are. Uh, I, Andy Narayan and head the intelligent commerce business at, and product line at Sentient Technologies. We've been in existence for about nine years. We're a San Francisco-based startup. Uh, here's the uh, simple fact. Uh, our interest in e-commerce was because we, we saw a fundamental disconnect in the experiences that retailers and brands are able to offer and what shoppers want to see. Uh, and we wanted to apply AI to this problem and uh, solve it at scale. Uh, so if there is a one part of the retail business that is having double-digit growth these days, it's the online piece. Uh, stores are being shut down, and we know about all the other stuff. Uh, but there's, not everything is great with the online piece either. So if you think about what is the e-commerce conversion rate, 100 people walk into the store, online store, and only 3% buy anything at all. This rate has remained the same for the last decade, decade and a half. Nothing's essentially changed. Which means 97% of people who come into the store, browse through the catalog, search through products, uh, compare shop products, add to, add to cart or abandon cart, they don't end up buying. The primary reason why people don't buy, leave the site without buying, is because they can't find product. Uh, how can you define a product that you can describe? Uh, there's been a lot of intel uh, you know, uh, improvements in, in technology of translating natural language to words and text. But the text in the system is hand-coded by one person and one person's representation of what that product is. How, how can you describe that? You could use filters. You could use search keywords. You could browse through tens of pages or hundreds of pages. The second is, it's finding a product that's hard, and then retailers and brands are actually making the customer do all of the hard work. Go through filters, text, type in more text, uh, adjust it. We have to optimize our keyword search to tell the system so as it gives us the right answer. This is how e-commerce works today. And if you look at the overall engagement, engagement really hasn't changed much in e-commerce. If you look at the site difference between a 2006 site and 2016, very little other than the images, nothing's essentially changed from a user experience standpoint. And experience is key from a shopper standpoint, but in the absence of it, everybody goes towards price. And it's a, it's a race to the bottom with the lowest price possible. The future of AI and retail are systems that understand intent and context. Show me white sneakers is two different things for two different people two different things for two different people in two different phases of a customer journey based on what they're looking for right now. A person who came to the store last time, 30 days back and looked for white sneakers is not looking for the same white sneakers today. They might be shopping for a different person. Understanding context and intent is very important, in the con especially in the new mobile first uh, era. The AI-powered personalization is a paradigm shift, what we can offer right now, which is we're used to retailers and brands pushing products, pushing experiences to, the, to shoppers, hoping that someone's going to click, which is why there is a limitation on the 3% conversion rate. There's only so much that we could do. But on the other hand, if we think about it differently, drop the AI into the experience, let the shoppers interact with the AI and pull products and pull experiences that they want, how would that be? That's the experiment that we've been running at Sentient for a while. What does the AI solve for? The AI solves for what to show and how to present it. What to show is, depending on where the shopper is in a customer journey, we show the right products. And then, depending on who this person is, how do you present it the right way so that it is engaging for the shopper? If you think about it this way, this is no different than what a sales associate does in store where the conversion rates are anywhere between 25 to 40%, somebody who walks into a store. And that is primarily because the sales associate is able to understand the needs of a shopper very quickly, present products, engage with them, say the right things, and help them convert. What would it mean to, replace, uh, you know, to recreate this experience online is what, how we can think about AI. 
And we can do this across the entire customer journey, whether it be bringing in a customer to a site or engaging them on a site when they're looking for a product or in the context of bringing them back onto a site to drive uh, additional uh, sales. And uh, how does the AI actually do this? It does this very simply through uh, a way of understanding the relationships between customer catalog and context. These are deep learning models, and you'll see a demo of this very, very soon. It actually understands the interrelationships between catalog, each product in the catalog, each style within a product, each SKU, and then the customer preferences, how they relate to this, and understanding the context, and then presenting this based on where they are in the shopper journey, whether it be a retargeting ad or in a search scenario or in the context of an email. What to show is a sales associate, is a replacement or a recreation of the sales associate online. When you go to a store and you walk in and then you go through a, to a section and then say, hey, you know what, show me like that, the sales associate does not come in and say, what color? Can you specify the color? What is it specifically? Do you know the tone of this? They don't ask you that. They implicitly understand that. They could have go to the back of the store, come back with four different options and present those products in front of you. They understand implicitly. The AI can actually do this through deep learning algorithms, deep learning models. Here's an example of what we did in Sunglass with well, one of our partnerships with Sunglass Hut. The traditional experience of using the left panel filters to actually go through different types of frames, selecting the color, and then looking at different, what is your face shape, answering a whole bunch of questions, and then paging through hundreds of products to refine it. This takes anywhere between two to six minutes. Or you could engage with the AI, and the AI is asking you a first question to say, what type of a sunglass are you looking for today? And you could say, I need something like that. The AI understands what frames shape you emphasized, and then color of the lens, what embellishments, what type are you uh, emphasizing, and then in a matter of three taps, you could actually add to bag. This is less number of taps than typing in a text query, search query. In the context of recommendations in a comparative shopping scenario for a main product, these are similar style recommendations. You are comparing this against the main product. But these are static results in most cases today. These are static experiences. If you change the color, the AI comes back with recommendations based on the style that you just chose. There are very few recommendation systems that are based on style. Most of them are based on cohort-based analysis for products. In the context of search refinement, you're searching for a certain product. Unless you get the search results right in the first two rows, most of the time, the shoppers are not going to buy the product. Instead, the AI provides an opportunity to continue this journey with stickiness to refine their selection. So these are very subtle implementations of the AI helping the shopper find the product, continuing the journey. These are not personified. These are not in any way intrusive. They are consistent with the e-commerce experience and helps the shopper find products. What we are seeing in terms of early results based on some of our implementations is shoppers who engage with the AI, they're converting at 30% plus higher in conversion rates. We're also noticing that higher average of order value and especially higher item price. This actually shows that people who pull products, they are a little bit price insensitive, or at least they are a little bit more price elastic uh, to actually offer higher prices if they find the right product. And also what is very interesting is there's a long tail in retail, which is a big issue. Uh, the AI actually helps surface the long tail and helps you know, merchandise 90% of the catalog in a very short period of time. So we talked about finding the product. The second is the experience. Today, to optimize an experience on a digital uh, site, whether it be on a mobile site or on a desktop site, uh, A-B testing is the tool we use. We could test a few items. We could use a few design elements and try to optimize it. But what if we can optimize all design elements, multiple design combinations, design elements, variations, thousands of combinations, and all of it at once? What if we could actually test this across funnels, across the entire funnel? And we could optimize it to drive higher levels of conversion. Here's an example of how this actually works. So we use this technology AI technology called evolutionary algorithms, which is based on 
uh, human evolution. So genes evolve, the uh, uh, survival of the fittest is, is, the, is exactly the theory behind evolutionary algorithms. And uh, what the AI essentially does is it looks at the design elements on a page and then says which of these design elements are most important to drive the outcome that the retailer is looking for right now, which is to add to cart or to uh, you know, maybe click on a button. So the AI actually optimizes, optimizes it with a, with a small amount of traffic. And then what it does is it starts evolving these di designs real time. So to find out which of these design elements actually matter most to drive the highest level of conversion. And then it does not stop there. It actually decides to start mutating and optimizes on those design combinations. It's the next generation of evolution that actually drives a higher, higher lift. And then you could continue to go on with another level of generation. So this generation, can, you can add more and more generations to refine it, refine the optimal conversion rate that you could push for. And all of this is actually done with uh, the AI making these decisions autonomously. Both those situations, the AI, uh, through the first product with deep learning technology, the second product with evolutionary algorithms are actually making decisions real time. It does not tell you what to suggest. It actually makes the recommendation to a shopper to a sh based on where they are in the journey, based on what, the, uh, what their platform is and who this, who this particular shopper is. If you notice that using the AI for uh, experience optimization, Conversion rates were up by about 40, 48%. So we're at a point where we have to put an end to 3% conversion rates, suboptimal experiences, and uh, uh, the way we have been trained to shop with database-centric systems that have, been, that have dominated e-commerce space for the last decade, couple of decades. Uh, we talked a lot about data as the new oil. Uh, might not be the case. Maybe intelligence might be a better way to think about this. We actually don't use any historical data to, to understand this. The AI learns in the moment. It leverages only clickstream data in session, nothing historical. It does not need it. It can get better with historical data, but it does not need it. So the, what we're trying to come at it is uh, understanding context, understanding this particular shopper or user better and understanding the intent at this moment could actually be better than traditional data-intensive, cohort-based micro-segmentation micro techniques that has dominated this space for the last decade, decade and a half. If you do that, we're going to end up with uh, happier customers, and actually retailers can go back to making some more money. Thank you very much.